is possible that this was terrorist related, but we don't know. It's also possible that this was workplace related. What I can assure the American people is we're going to get to the bottom of this and that we are going to be uh, vigilant as we always are in getting the facts uh, before we issue uh, any uh, decisive judgments in terms of how this occurred. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to a special edition of the Steve Malzberg Show. Our complete coverage of the terrorist attack, or what many believe uh, will be proven to be a terrorist attack in San Bernardino, California, yesterday. Of course, we're 24 hours since the attack, and uh, we have 14 dead. Uh, at least 21 is the number now wounded. We did get one uh, media update from the police chief in uh, San Bernardino today and the FBI agent in charge. We'll let you hear from the FBI agent in just a second before we go to uh, our panel of Andrew McCarthy and Fred Flights. Uh, but there's uh, been a lot of uh, revelations, a lot of reports. CNN reporting that uh, the suspect, Saeed Farouk, was radicalized. He went to Saudi Arabia, he went to Pakistan, and was radicalized and in touch with people uh, who are known to be international terrorists. And uh, just uh, as we speak, police are still at the rented home. They don't know if the couple live there or not, but the rented home of Saeed uh, uh, Farouk and his wife, uh, who committed the uh, attack and were both killed, and they have unearthed a, a bomb factory. And many have said that it's the kind of bombs, AIDs, that come right out of a Al Qaeda or ISIS manual on how to make these kinds of bombs. Uh, so it looks more and more, to me, like this was a terrorist attack by a radical jihadist, had nothing to do with workplace violence, which I believe the government still classifies Fort Hood as. And the media has raised their hands and said, oh, we don't know. It could, we don't know. We're, we're, we're waiting to see what, what could the motive have been. Uh, yet, the uh, shooter in Colorado of the Planned Parenthood, all it took was one report that reportedly the shooter said when he was being arrested, no more baby parts. And boom, we knew the motive. So double standard, you tell me. All right, let's introduce Andy McCarthy, former federal prosecutor, National Review columnist, New York Times bestselling author, and Fred Flights, former CIA analyst and senior vice president at the Center for Security Policy. Gentlemen, thrilled to have both of you on such a, uh, a very, uh, very important uh, day. Um, let's start uh, with you, Andy. Uh, what does this ring out to you as the attack? Well, you know, Steve, I think that you always want to have a bomb factory nearby if you're, if you're worried about workplace incidents. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I tip my hat to President Obama for trying to or managing to imagine that one. I, I, you know, I think with, with respect to a lot of the bad news, uh, that the administration's policies ha have led to over the years, the way they get around it is by redefining words and redefining reality so that they're no longer recognizable. And one of the words they've done this with is terrorism. So they've so narrowly defined terrorism that essentially if someone's not wearing, you know, an ISIS T-shirt while they detonate a bomb, uh, the, the law enforcement people who are op operating under the instructions of their, uh, you know, of the political leadership here, that's just a, a fact of executive branch life, resist saying that something was terrorism. Yeah, Fred? This is obviously radical Islamist terrorism or radical jihadist terrorism. Uh, there are simply too many weapons, too many bombs uh, to say that it's anything else. What I think, what I believe is that this was probably going to be a much larger attack, maybe on the scale of the Paris attack. The attack on this social service center didn't make any sense with the number of weapons that this couple was putting together. And I think we have to assume there's some direct tie to ISIS or Al Qaeda. Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, time will tell. I, want you to, I do want you to hear what the FBI uh, agent on the scene in charge of the investigation said today uh, at the press conference. Let's watch. Again, it, it would be irresponsible and premature of me to, to call this terrorism. The FBI defines terrorism in a very specifically, and we are still, that is the big question for us, is what is the motivation for this? First and foremost, the integrity of this investigation, again, is paramount. Secondly, it's ultimately to determine the motive and the the inspiration for this attack yeah all right so uh th there you go i mean uh andy is he just uh 
being careful, or is he just being politically correct, or both? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a case of both. Look, you don't want the FBI ever to get out in front of the facts. And, and as a former prosecutor, I, I sympathize with this because if you make a mistake at this stage, you give fodder for the defense if you have an ultimate trial. And I do think, I know that the uh, two assailants that have been identified, uh, the two jihadists, I should say, because I think Fred's right about this, uh, they've been killed. But, you know, I'd also note that you know, we have information about, you know, potentially a lot of meetings or deliveries at, uh, at the home where these people were staying in. And some people who, in, you know, seeped in political correctness well, didn't want to notify the police. I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but I do want to play the gentleman you're talking about uh, from a news report. And then you'll hear what the reporter said at the end. This speaks exactly to what you're saying of Muslim men seen going in and out of that house for months. Here we are. And we've noticed one day, like, six Middle Eastern guys walk by across the street kind of dressed nice and they would walk around and go over to State Street and eat there because I seen them eating there when I went to the paint store one day Redlands paint anyways we sat around lunch thinking well what were them guys doing in this neighborhood and it went on for like three weeks until the project was done we'd see them every other day leave over here by where they're raiding that apartment And that man that we interviewed said he never said anything because he didn't want to be seen as racially profiling. Yeah, so there you go, Andy, to exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, exactly right. And, you know, if Fred is right, uh, this, is, this is an operation that's going to have involved more than these two people. So I think this investigation is probably just getting started rather than wrapping up. And Fred, what, what, what's your take when you hear that, uh, that, you know, I said months, weeks, according to that eyewitness, a uh, Muslim uh, or Middle Eastern looking man going in and out of that, that house that has now been proven to be a bomb factory at the very least? I mean, I think it's very disturbing. And I think that uh, U.S. officials have to make very clear that if you see something, you have to say something. If this neighbor had said something to the police, 12 people, or I think it's 14 people, would be alive today. I mean, it's... It's not racial profiling. It's, it, it's defending our communities. See something, say something. All right, Andy, uh, the war against guns and the willingness of Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, uh, even Barack Obama today, uh, but, but the other two before the bodies were even counted, to right away come out and blame the NRA, right away come out and blame guns. Um, it, 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 it's sickening. Yeah, is the, is the NRA a pipe bomb outfit now, too? I, you know, I, it, hard to... You know, hard to wrap your brain around this, Steve. I, I'd also point out that, you know, it's a, it's a government building, right? So it's like a, a gun-free zone. And pr probably a large part of the reason why the terrorists felt invulnerable uh, in a place like that and that they could pull off an operation like this is they didn't have to worry about being fired on. Yeah, Fred, good point. I, I think that's right. I, I, and, I mean, frankly, if there was stricter gun control, they'd use knives and they'd still make, they would still be making bombs. The president has to focus on the fact that this is an ideological war against the global jihad movement, which is a war with Western society. I mean, he seems to think it's a distinct terrorist group or it's a regional group. These people are motivated by a radical ideology that is supported by more than a small minority of the world's Muslims. Right. And Andy, I want to go back to the Fort Dick Six real quick, because this, the one similarity is... Um, this guy was the most happy-go-lucky, carefree guy in the world. Nobody knew, had an inkling, okay, at least nobody that he worked with, et cetera. And the Fort Dick Six, they were taxi drivers, pizza delivery. Again, if it wasn't for that guy in the video store um, who found them out, nobody would have known. Well, that's, and that's our history with uh, domestic events of, uh, of international terrorism in the United States. Generally speaking, uh, they are Muslims who... Uh, you know, meld into the community. And, you know, you find out later on after things happen that, that you know, there are a million signs there that you should have seen, right. uh, but people don't see them. And this goes back to the point we were making before. They're discouraged not to see right. them. Right. They're, they're, they're at, the, at the threat of being labeled a homophobe or Islamophobe. Not a homophobe, but racist or Islamophobe. Fred Flights is staying. Andy, thank you very much, sir. Don't go away. We're coming back, folks.